I want to get to the game that is going to get all of our attention. That is number eight, USC at Colorado. That's the big noon game. It's also a good opportunity for me to tell you that I will be hosting a live tailgate in Los Angeles where we will be seated with Cody Kessler and Philip Lindsay as we talk through the game. Really excited to pick those guys' brains, maybe get some stories from them about their time playing. And, well, reminisce a bit about two great Pac-12 players as the Pac-12 seems to be, you know, in its last season. It ought to be a lot of fun. Please join us there. Be live on the Twitters. You'll be loud about it. I'll be loud about it. We'll see it everywhere. All right, so USC is favored by 21 and a half points in this game, and that's a half point more than what Oregon was favored by last week, which is the first time that, again, the line wasn't correct. I just want to point that out, right? The line wasn't correct again. It, 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 it should have probably been another 10 points in the other direction because that game was not close, 42 to six. And now we're talking about the Pac 12's number one offense versus the Pac 12's worst defense. And that really is going to be the story of this game. It's not just Caleb Williams versus Shadur Sanders as much as we would like it to be. It's can the offensive line keep Shadur Sanders upright long enough to do anything down the field? And can the Pac 12, Pac 12's worst defense do anything about catching Caleb Williams because nobody else has been able to do that quite at all, right? So we're also talking about this game being on big noon, so it's going to be in a big window. And for the third consecutive week, Colorado has been one of the large, no, the largest drawn football game, period. Even in the blowout against Oregon, we're talking about 10 million people showing up to watch that game. So Caleb Williams, USC, they're going to get as much of the spotlight as is possible against the most interesting team in college football. It's also about how quickly does USC put this game away? And I think that's going to have a lot to do with it, right? Because USC looks sluggish uh, to downright bad at times against Arizona State over the weekend. And if you're going to have a down game, sleepwalk through a game, let it be Arizona State, right? Who gave up, you know, a, well, USC ends up giving up 28 points to Arizona State, which is the most that they've given up, tied for the most they've given up all year. But I saw an Arizona State team that I hadn't seen all year, right? Drew Pine had his moments, but also looked like the kind of dude that was playing against USC last year. Like it wasn't that big for him. And they were getting some plays from guys that I hadn't seen them get plays from, but you're also talking about a USC team that didn't play his best football and still had a Marshawn Lloyd averaging like 10 yards a touch, right? Caleb Williams didn't look great. And yet somehow you would find those guys wide open down there. Brendan Rice, Dorian Singer, Zachariah Branch, who is the only player in FBS this year with a receiving TD, a punt return TD and a kickoff return TD. Like, Cliff Branch's great nephew is out there absolutely putting on the best ex ex performance we've seen in a USC uniform since probably Reggie Bush, right? When we're talking about what that guy is capable of. And that's that's a guy playing in the outfield, right? That That's a skill player. That's not Caleb Williams. And that offensive line has not been as bad as I thought it might be. Now, the question for USC is always going to be their defense, right? I have given up on this idea that USC will be a top scoring defense because frankly, that ain't what Alex Grinch wants. I understand that people don't believe this to be true, but if you're paying attention to USC's defense and you're not paying attention to turnovers and takeaways, you're missing the point, right? Turnovers, takeaways, and tackles for loss. That is what that defense wants to do. It wants to get the ball back as quickly as possible to the offense. So that means selling out to go sack the quarterback. That means jumping routes to go get the ball. And if you get beat over the top, guess what? They're going to score quickly and your team's going to get the ball back, right? USC's averaging 55 a game, but the defense is only giving up 20 a game. And if you can run the ball on that offense, then you get to keep the defense off the field. So I think Alex Grinch is getting exactly what he wants from his defense, which is great pass rush and really opportunistic defensive back play. And you know, you can do all of that when you got a six foot five dude in the middle linebacker, among other things, right? So I I think that you're gonna see Colorado move the ball against USC in a way that frankly they just couldn't against Oregon, but I don't expect it to be moving all that much, right? I think now we're really getting into the spot where we've seen what the ceiling is for Colorado. I was low to tell you what I thought the ceiling was because I didn't want to get out in front of an undefeated team. Nobody wants that, right? But now Oregon has showed you the ceiling, right? They've also showed you how much it means to them to beat Coach Prime. Like we got Oregon putting out pro wrestling tapes because Shiloh Sanders did what Shiloh Sanders has been doing his entire career, which is just trash talk. And that is getting loudly retweeted, right? And we're getting Duck fans coming up getting Brody because they did what they were supposed to do. They won. Now go make the college football playoff. Now go win a national championship. That's what you're supposed to be doing, Oregon. You're way ahead of what Colorado is. And I think Prime hit on this, but I'm going to hit on it a little bit better, I think. 
teams aren't playing against Colorado. Teams are playing against Prime. And the thing about playing against a head coach is you don't get to hit him. Despite Jimbo Fisher giving Asante every reason to try to knock him over, stepping out onto that field, and Jimbo near the headlights, just throwing it. Jimbo, you got to make that tackle. You don't get to go and tackle the head coach, right? Now, Prime is in this primarily because he believes he can do good, right? He believes that he can put players in a position to succeed and he can get them recognition they wouldn't otherwise get. He's also in this to coach his boys, particularly Shadour, right? This is a man who started coaching football because he did not like how the Wee football coach was coaching his kids. And he found himself getting up to go give pointers to the Wee football coach and then said, well, I'm going to do this, then I'm going to just do this. So he has been coaching those boys since they were very, very young. And he has wanted to continue to coach them throughout their careers. If there was ever a reason for Prime to go coach in the NFL, it would be to go coach his boys. But he doesn't want to do that. As a matter of fact, he's kind of throwing cold water on the idea that either Shiloh or Shador, particularly Shador, would go into the NFL draft next year because, frankly, they're getting this thing running toward 2024 when they're going to leave the Pac-12 and they're going to join the Big 12. And we want to see just what they're capable of off of a loss, off of a really embarrassing loss. But also, I'd like to see Colorado, in particular, players not named Shadour Sanders or Travis Hunter or Shiloh Sanders or even out in McCaskill or Jimmy Horn or Xavier Weaver. I keep going on about that. Prove themselves. Show us something, right? Because you're getting the kind of exposure that most college football players say they want. Now what are you going to do with it, right? I had this same thought about all sorts of teams that want to tell me how good they are. It only works if you continue to be good. It only works if you continue to win. That is why when Lincoln Riley went to USC and took over a four and eight program, flipped the roster, they came out AP ranked number 14 because of what he had done prior. We're talking about a man who has already won 70 games as a head coach. And he ain't start head coaching until 2017. The man is a proven winner. He also knows what it is like to flip over a roster. And when I talk with people ahead of this season, Riley was the only person to go on the mic and tell me that he thought what Prime was doing was not only great, but he expected. Hear from him. Uh, a coach like, like what Coach Sanders is that, that has been able to obviously be so impactful as a player. You bring him into the college game, all the attention he's brought. They've been aggressive about rebuilding the roster, which, listen, that's his job. Like, that, that's all of our job. Like, you have, you have a team, you have a university responsible to it. It's your job to build that roster the very best you can. If anybody knows what it is like to try to rebuild a roster from scratch and turn it over in the transfer portal era, it's Riley, right? Who brought, didn't bring in 56 new scholarship players, brought in closer to 27, 40, depending on who you want to ask and when guys came in and when they went out. But one of the big ones was the quarterback, Caleb Williams. Well, Prime brought one of those with him too and Shador Sanders. Now, everybody is on board with what I was yelling for the last eight months, which is that that dude was one of the three best quarterbacks regardless of FBS or FCS. And now, oh yeah, Shador Sanders is really good. Yes, I know this. I watched the dude play at Jackson State for two consecutive years before anybody else deigned to care, right? And then I know that Prime is a winner. Right. The man has lost seven games in three years, might lose eight in three years. But tell me who else has that sort of a head coaching record. So this is really going to be a game where Colorado players get to show their resilience. And if nothing else, know that Prime is going to continue to take those dudes to task because that's the kind of coach he is. Like some of us have been wondering, uh, not me. Well, I should say others have been wondering where Cormani McLean is. But Cormani McLean isn't doing the things that Prime needs him to do to even see the football field. Things like watching film, like Prime will say, hey, I look at who's watching film for how long? Because, you know, they got the iPad hooked up and they can tell you how much screen time they got on those iPads. If you're not watching film, he's not going to put you out there, right? If he doesn't see that you're engaged in practice, he's not going to put you out there. We also got to see Alton McCaskill for the first time against Oregon in garbage time. He had five carries for 17 yards. So that is a do they need to contribute. But really, it's about their offensive line. Can they get some push up front? And can they protect Shador Sanders? Defensively, that's that's the thing, right, is the front seven. Can you penetrate that offensive line? Can you stop Marshawn Lloyd and Austin Jones from running the football? Because I think if you can force Caleb Williams to throw the football 50 times, that's your best case scenario. That's, that's it. You got to get into a shootout with this team. Otherwise, it could be over in a hurry. And we know that USC is capable of doing just that. 
That's what I'm going to watch from them, right? I already think that's the most dangerous football team in America. I need them to prove that they are a national title contender because that's the last thing for Lincoln Riley to do. Like win a college football playoff game, win a national championship, and he will have accomplished everything that this sport has for him to accomplish by his 40th birthday, which is wild to think about, but that's where we're at. This is also low-key a pro football Hall of Famer's son's game. Like I mentioned, Zach Branch, and uh, Zion Branch for that matter, are great nephews of Cliff Branch, who's an Oakland Raiders legend, right? Also went to Colorado, hello. But Brendan Rice, who played at Colorado, now plays at USC, son of Jerry Rice. We mentioned Shadour and Shiloh Sanders. This is going to be a lot of fun from that standpoint alone. So I'm curious to see who shows up for this game. I've already heard from a number of people who are going to be at Folsom for it, and the sidelines are going to be filled once again. You can expect a who's who to be on that sideline because that's what Prime invites. But Colorado's got to show out for Colorado. Less about Prime on the chest and more about Colorado on the chest and your name on your back because that seems to matter now, right, in a way that it didn't. You really got to go out there and prove to the rest of the nation that you are that kind of a program. I say that because we're heading into the dissolution of the Pac-12 with Colorado and Utah, among others, joining the Big 12 next year. So all this marketing is going to follow Prime to the Big 12 where he's going to get to recruit the state of Texas. Good luck with that. But what would Colorado have to do to walk into the 2024 offseason and be a Big 12 contender, maybe even the Big 12 favorite? Well, for starters, they have to get past Utah at the end of the season, which is kind of a low-key good rivalry game all of a sudden. But also, they would have to go and get eight eight wins. Nine wins would get them there, right? Nine wins, we're all going to believe that Colorado is going to be one of the best football teams in the Big 12 next year because Prime will go into the portal and make them better at positions of need. But seven wins, I think, is enough, right? It's just who are those seven wins? You'd like to see them get past one more ranked opponent. Texas Christian was ranked when they played them, right? And I think maybe Utah is that team they can kind of sneak up on because the style making the fight might be a big part of this. Thank you for watching the number one college football show. Please remember to subscribe to the channel and like this video so that you don't miss any of the best college football coverage in America.